Hello, dear friends. Let me welcome everyone watching Sotnik TV at this moment. It's March 28, 2020. Let's begin with the following story. The authorities in Russia have decided to temporarily restrict the travel by highway, railroad, pedestrian, water and mixed checkpoints. This includes the land border crossing connected with Belarus. The order was signed by Mikhail Mishustin, the Prime Minister. The restriction comes into force starting March 30. The story over the coronavirus has shown the true nature of the remaining post-Soviet era citizens of Russia, showing how brainwashed, wild and selfish the responsibility is clear. Over 52,000 visitors from all over Russia are trying to visit the resort town of Sochi. Vladimir Putin declared this a week off work, and they took that as an opportunity for a short vacation. They don't see any danger and celebrate just like adolescents in class when the teacher is suddenly sick and there is no supervision. So the Soviets have decided to take real vacation, once they got the chance. They feel very glad about this unplanned week off. A plane with 147 tourists heading to Sochi turned back after 10 minutes in flight yesterday. It returned to the airport for its safety. Let me share a quote. A charter flight operated by Russia Airlines took off from the city of Perm, destined to arrive in Sochi by 2.54 p.m. After 10 minutes in flight, the passengers were informed that their tickets were cancelled. The plane turned back and landed at Perm airport. Today, Krasnodar region, where the resort of Sochi is situated, declared a quarantine. All hotels, vacation homes, restaurants and bars are now closed. Bus routes and flights are cancelled as well. Along with that overwhelming ignorance and total carelessness, this shows a total lack of survival instincts. Russians are being fed lies by propaganda outlets. That spoils the information stream drawing a false picture. The general population is confused and can no longer understand what's going on. RIA news outlet was spreading a blatant lie today. Russia has created a cure for coronavirus. The Federal Medical Biological Agency has put forth a possible medication for treating the coronavirus, as reported by the agency press service. End of quote. God damn you, RIA news. Each of your employees need to be prosecuted for every lie that comes out of your fake collector. Dear viewers, don't believe in real news outlet or to put in propaganda. There is no medicine for the coronavirus invented in Russia. Mankind has yet to create any cure from this virus. Not in Europe, nor in the US, nor in Russia. The world's best specialists are now busy solving that problem. Still, the results are disappointing, unfortunately. So the pandemic will rage on. According to an optimistic scenario, this may only last for several more months. According to a pessimistic or the more realistic one, this may take up to two and a half years. Let me repeat the exact numbers for those who haven't heard that before. Let us count now from April 1, 2020. The US is expecting the epidemic to spike in 12 weeks. Italy, Spain and France in 9 weeks. Canada should be prepared for the same in August or potentially September and Russia should expect the epidemic to strike in 13 to 14 weeks. Sergei Sabyanin, the mayor in charge of Moscow, has declared total disinfection in the city. So, disinfection, you say? Will that be the result? Will they come and clean every house? Are you waiting for that? Well, here is the reality. The following footage was made today in downtown Moscow, around a mile away from Kremlin. Let us take a look now.
прикол. Здравствуйте. Хотите прикол? Хотите цирк увидеть? Смотри, 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 смотри. Вот цирк. Видите, что будет? And that is how disinfection is performed in Russia. They came with a rag and a bucket. They took a picture and moved next door. Then they attached those pictures to a fake report so that it looked more believable. They deserve a prison term. Not those protesting against Putin need to be taken to jail. But that stooge in the suit, who fakes disinfection reports in broad daylight. They all need to go to jail. Mayor Sibyanin does and so does President Putin. During the recent days on the internet we saw some videos of buses filled with Russian guardians or armored vehicles. Meanwhile, the authorities keep quiet in this regard. The country has been under special rule since autumn 1991. That was when residential houses in Moscow, Volgodonsk and Buynaksk exploded. The special regime's grip on power never ended and since then it has only tightened its grip. I discussed this topic with Igor Chubais, a historian. See part of our dialogue next. Sending troops to Moscow is easy, but returning them to their barracks afterwards is a much harder task. Isn't that connected with the special operations attempting to take down Putin? Is it some type of military junta involved? You see, amid the lack of any useful information from reliable sources, anything can be speculated. That does make sense. Some claim that the victory parade preparations are moving along as planned. What parade? What are they talking about during such a severe epidemic? Others speculate preparations for a state of defense are happening now. We're not sure, though. I'm not going to speculate. But I find the situation rather alarming. If you behave in the way the government has been, no wonder you ended up with a crisis. You can't continue to behave in such a way. You need to switch your approach to set new benchmarks and formulate rules. And if the authorities keep using the old ways, the situation will finally reach critical mass. I guess that it may happen quite quickly, as the situation is already too difficult. They have been used propaganda and censorship against own people for ages. They have been using special services as well. Yet according to the latest survey, less than half of the citizens in Russia support Putin's presidency renewal. So the propaganda isn't effective anymore. This seems to me to be the only way they can maintain power. Yet the force they use is limited as well. It's impossible to recruit the entire country to the Russian Guard. We've already experienced this phenomenon when the people declare themselves the enemy of the people. That doesn't end up well. Today I've also spoken with Valery Solovey, a political analyst. He provided his comment exclusively for our show. There's a theory that the virus doesn't come from a natural source. It behaves as if it were some weapon. It keeps mutating all the time. Allegedly, it was meant to terminate people of a certain age. Can you guess to what type of terrible special operation this could have been? Regarding the wires it created or even perhaps modified artificially, I do not doubt that. And so do the special services of the world's leading countries. They're now looking for a country or for those who modified the wires. Speaking of the consequences, it's quite difficult to modify the virus in a way so that it only kills people of a certain age. But when a person is getting older, the body gets weaker, 
and their diseases begin to accumulate. So elders turn out to be more vulnerable to this pathogen. Let's not spread a conspiracy theory, special services have very little doubt that the virus is artificial. And I'm sure I can say that. Who made it? Nobody knows. As far as I know, they want to find that part out badly. What could the consequences be when the truth is uncovered? Sooner or later we'll know which country or force is behind it all. I don't know and don't even want to imagine the consequences for the people involved with it. But those who developed it were probably able to cover their tracks. Where scientists are involved, there is always a line of bodies to follow. Here's a recent story from Venezuela that has to do with Nicolas Maduro, a friend of Vladimir Putin. US drug enforcement agents flew to Colombia to arrest Cleaver Alcala Cardenas. He is a resigned Venezuelan general wanted by the US for drug terrorism. According to the unconfirmed report, Alcala has surrendered to the DEA and agreed to cooperate with prosecutors. If this is true, quite soon we will come to know the true volume drugs that are smuggled from Venezuela into the rest of the countries of the world, including Russia. Who knows, maybe Putin will be named a drug terrorist too. Though it's quite wishful thinking. Even Pablo Escobar is just a crying baby compared to him. You may recall me saying at one point that every dictator considers himself special, trying to learn from the mistakes of the previous ones. Putin thinks the same of himself as well. He believes himself capable of learning from other previous failures and faults to summarize everything and to avoid that in the future. Thus he will hand white knuckle on to that Kremlin cliff and will never release his grip. Yet history is an inventive mystery. It brings a new reality that all the dictators' experiences become obsolete after a time. The previous experience resets itself. And under such circumstances, Vladimir Putin is now one on one with history, with the people, and with the country. He is surrounded by his enemies and his lick spittles. And his enemies are far more sincere than his lickspittles. They express their gratitude and speak of their plans openly, while the lickspittles can only lick and betray everyone. They may betray us any day now. <coughs> this is not the virus. This is it for today. Please support us on Patreon. Please recommend us to your friends. Please watch Sotnik TV. Take care of yourself, of your heart, souls and also about your lungs. Take care of your friends and family. Take care of all of them. I see you soon on Sotnik TV. Take care everyone.